Monster Hunter World finally released on PC yesterday, so that means today we get a benchmark it with some budget graphics cards. Today I have 8 of them by the way. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Sorry there's no weekly download episode this week. This is when it would normally be uploaded, but I feel like these Monster Hunter World benchmarks are a little bit more important. At least that's what you guys told me. If you're new here and you wanna see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode, but yeah. Let's start benchmarking. For this video and per popular request, I'm gonna be benchmarking eight different budget graphics cards today, and I'll be using the Dell Optiplex as our testing platform. Today we'll be using the GT 1030, R7 360, GTX 650, RX 460, GTX 750 Ti, GTX 660 Ti, GTX 960, and finally the GTX 1050 Ti. Now obviously I don't have every graphics card in the world here, but I feel like this is a pretty good mix up of used graphics cards for here in 2018, if you don't have one of these exact cards, then it shouldn't be that hard to find which one of these yours is closest to. That way you'll at least be able to ballpark what kind of performance you'll get. For our testing platform today, I'm going to use this Dell Optiplex that you guys have seen in a ton of other build guide videos. It's rocking an i5-3470 clocked at 3.2 GHz, has 8 GB of DDR3 RAM, and I have Monster Hunter World installed on a Kingston 120GB SSD. Keep in mind, I could have used a much beefier of a testing platform, but I feel like this Dell Optiplex is way more realistic and actually a build that you would pair one of these GPUs with. And with all that out of the way, let's queue up the benchmarks. To kick off these benchmarks, here's a chart showing every card with the exact same settings, 1080p and low. I'll show the individual benchmarks with specific settings for each card in just a second. The first thing to note here is look how bad the GTX 650 did because of only having one gigabyte of VRAM, it just couldn't handle the 1080p resolution. The second thing to note is that the AMD cards ran pretty well, unlike they did in the No Man's Sky benchmark earlier this week. And finally, before getting into the individual benchmarks, I wanted to note that for every single benchmark in this video, I turned off the volume rendering setting because it causes unnecessary strain on your PC and it honestly looks worse with it on. The second thing is that some of these settings have variable settings, meaning that they'll change based off of how your CPU is currently running, so just be aware of that. All right, so the first card we have is the super budget GT 1030, and with this card, I cranked the settings down to 720p and low and got a solid FPS average of 47. I do want to point out that it was a pretty smooth experience as you can see with those tight timings on the left and this goes for pretty much every graphics card today except for the GTX 650. Speaking of which, the 650 was up next and here I also kept the settings at 720p and low but I only managed to get an average of 32 FPS. This right here is due to the lack of VRAM in the 650 like I said earlier. It only has one gigabyte so be aware of that if you're thinking about buying this game with only one gigabyte of VRAM on your GPU. In 1080p this game could only average like 13 FPS and it was completely unplayable. Next up was the GTX 660 Ti, still working on making a dedicated video on this one by the way, and in 1080p in low settings just like the graph I showed earlier, we averaged a very smooth 44 FPS. Its rival card GTX 750 Ti was up next and also in 1080p in low settings I averaged one more than the 660 Ti at 45 FPS. The results were almost the exact same with these two cards and both of them played the game very smoothly despite being under that 60 FPS mark. Moving on, we have the GTX 960, a card that I featured in my top three budget GPUs of 2018 video, and in 1080p with medium settings, I managed to crank out 48 FPS. Also a very smooth experience. The 960's rival card followed, the GTX 1050 Ti, and here in 1080p and medium settings again, we managed just a bit lower at 44 FPS. Even though there's a 4 FPS difference, that's still in the margin for error in my opinion, so I would still consider these cards neck and neck. Moving on to our two AMD cards for today, the R7 360 was up, make sure you check out my R7 360 in 2018 video, and here I kept the settings at 1080p and low, and still managed to crank out 43 FPS, very impressive for this super budget card. And finally, our last card is the RX 460, and here I kept the settings the same at 1080p and low, and it managed to crank out 55 FPS. I hope you can tell from all these results that for Monster Hunter World, you don't really need to chase that 60 FPS mark, because even in the 40s and 50s, it remains very very smooth and certainly playable with these budget GPUs. Well that wraps up my Monster Hunter World benchmarking video with some budget graphics cards. Make sure you check out one of these 
these two videos over here if you haven't seen them yet. And definitely hit that subscribe button because I have some very cool content coming up in the near future about why you're possibly gaming completely wrong. You don't want to miss that video.